Uh, good morning to the studio from Norway. I won't give you any points for the Eurovision Song Contest, but I say hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's brilliant to have you on. And I imagine that the whole country are talking about this man um, because he has settled into the Premier League like nothing we've ever seen before. Were you surprised? And, and has football and, and your pundits, I suppose, in your country been surprised at how quickly has settled? Or did you think it was going to happen? Well, I guess I'm I'm the pundits who've seen him most lives. I saw the last two years of him in Germany. I followed him the last year for a documentary we just published. And mm. so is it is it a surprise? Is it a surprise that it goes so quick with him all the time? Because he did that when he came to Dortmund. He came in as a sub against Augsburg. And 20 minutes later, he scored a hat-trick. <laughs> Uh, he, uh, he had his first game in the Champions League against Genk. Then he looked like a kid. Uh, now he looks a bit bigger. But then he scored a hat trick in that game. So it always takes quicker than you think. But there were some pundits and there were some analysers done when he came, and they said, "Yeah, but that was only in Germany." And but he had already done it in the Champions League. So so that he should do the level, yeah. Absolutely. We expected that because when you come to Manchester City, and, and I guess that was Teddy Sheringham said as well, because when you play with all these players around you, it's also easier to get your strength out. So they kind of growing together, get together at Manchester City. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say to you. I mean, I, I didn't have any doubt at all that he'd come and score goals. Uh, you know, I'm looking at his qualities. He's quick, he's strong, he's brave, he's good in the air. But the one thing that I've really, really noticed... And I hope I hope this is taken as a compliment. As his game intelligence, he's very very clever and aware of where to go. Um, and I suppose when you're playing in a team that you know full of intelligent players like whether it's De Bruyne, or whether it's Gundogan, whether it's Foden, it's a perfect fit. Absolutely, and remember, they said it after the Community Shield. They compared Nunez and, and Haaland, and suddenly Haaland was a flop after 90 minutes. Mm. But remember, even in that game, you could have had three. Correct. Uh, if, 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 if we see back on that game, but Ali, mm. you've got a va very valuable point. His his running is the key here because when they said when he came to England, is this is only a counter striker? No, it's not. This is about his run in the box. And Ali, you were one of the most yeah. clever around doing that, and you know. If you saw that fantastic goal he scored against Dortmund when he did that karate kind of kick, oh. but still his run ahead of that was unbelievable. He did that little turn, get the defender away, makes him always stay kind of alone in the box. And when you have the players that you mentioned at Manchester City, they will then pick him out. And another thing, and I've I'm, I'm said it for many years, I have, there's two things that is, um, it's, it's magical, I think. is that First of all, he never goes in offside, meaning that his <laughs> runs is unbelievable. And secondly, and in all due respect, Ali, he's the only goal getter I've seen in the world who is as happy when others scores. Yeah. And why is that? And why is that? And why is that important? It's important because I think then he will be liked in the dressing room straight away. So yeah. he, he can adjust very, very straight. Because there was a, a, in the game now against Manchester United, he could have had a shot from like 16, 17 yards, and he played Grealish. And I asked him after the game, and he said, "Yeah, maybe I did overdo it at that time." He <laughs> said, "But that, but that is the mentality of him. He he wants to play his, in his teammates in in better position." But one of one of the most impressive things even about the weekend we saw I think Jan we saw something in his game that we hadn't seen so far since he's come to this country we've seen his goals we've seen his finishes but we saw his creation for Foden at the back post that was brilliant he gave the pass to Foden that you would normally see him receive uh, absolutely, and, and remember back when he, when he scored against Nottingham Forest, his first goal was after 11 minutes. That was his first touch of the ball. He had a second goal in the 22nd minute. That was his second touch of the ball. <laughs> and, and and Pep Guardiola said at the press conference, "I want him to more be more involved in the game." And and what you're saying is that he got this. The, he is clever enough to be more involved, yeah. and he has taken steps. And I think his link-up play when he started at Dortmund wasn't that good as it is now, but he's, he's, he's improving. And you will see him being top of the charts also uh, assist when, when this season will come to an end. Yeah, you've got uh, Kevin De Bruyne in that side, who on his own obviously is a world-class player. To take someone like Erling Haaland and match him with a Kevin De Bruyne, aside from all the other talent in that side and all the other avenues of, of service that he'll get, 
even he was saying that the chemistry that I've immediately created with Kevin De Bruyne is incredible. It's insane. He said, I can make these runs and, and Kevin will almost find me anywhere. It's, it's, it's amazing to see, really, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and it's interesting to see on the pitch because there are different type of of using your language and he using his body language and what I like with him is when he do, does his runs he, he kind of show where he wants the ball he shows his teammates all the time he, he's doing that so cleverly and of course when you have one of the best players in the world Kevin De Bruyne mm -hmm. seeing that that is not a, a surprise but what we also should remember that Manchester City scored a lot of goals without Erling Haaland. Mm. So what, what we've seen now, I think we've seen that they develop their game a bit. It, it, the kind of different kind of goals they're doing that. And may for the Manchester City fans, they, they will hope that that will take them to all titles. But I, I think, if, if I may say, I, I heard uh, before I went on as well, we're talking about the monster a machine. I think that is to underestimate him a bit because he is a 22-year-old kid who will sit now somewhere in Manchester thinking that, well, I have to do it again. Mm. And all this, what it does do to your body, your mental awareness, I think that is the most impressive thing because it's not that people are talking about is everybody can do the math, but we know he won't score 60 goals. Mm. That won't happen because no. fo football is not like that. Um, you talk about what he's going to be needing to do off the pitch. I imagine he needs to eat the right things, Jan. And um, <laughs> you've been you've been speaking. You know about where this. we're going here, Jan. You know where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> you've been speaking about this all in today's papers because we're fascinated with what players eat in this country. We're fascinated with food, aren't we? Apparently, Alfie's lasagna is what uh, fuels Erling Haaland before every game. Have you tried it? Is it that good? Uh, well, I spoke I, I spoke to uh, Alfie again yesterday because I said you have to do this book now in England. And don't you? But uh, yeah, it was. But we, uh, when we had Alfie before the game, and he said he was doing this lasagna, and I, I knew about that. And, and then suddenly he scored three, and straight after the game, I start getting text text messages for people. Could we have that receipt that he's getting? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and I was just going to say, if you could ask Alfie to send me some up here in Glasgow, I'll be unstop I'll be unstoppable at the five sides next week. <laughs> I will tell him. <laughs> um, Jan, thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Uh, we really loved thank having you. you on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, pleasure. And I Thanks, imagine Jan. there'll be a lot more to talk about with this certain Erling Haaland in, uh, in the seasons to come. So I imagine we'll be speaking to you again, hopefully soon. Yeah. Jan, thank you very Cheers. much for your time. Thanks, Jan. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Uh, former Norway striker Jan Arger, Fjord Toft, uh, teammate of Erling Haaland's dad, Alfie, um, giving us all the insight there. What a brilliant interview. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.